about our relationship with people. If I give you something and you tell me, thank you, thank you. We have a particular tribe in Nigeria. When you do something for them today, 10 years to come, they are still saying, thank you for what you did 10 years ago. It's their, it's their style. And I love that spirit. Now, when somebody does something for you, you say, thank you for the shoe you gave me. After one week, oh, that shoe, when I wear it, everybody is dancing for me. Thank you. After one month, hey, that shoe is talking. After one year, hey, that, do you know what you would do? Anywhere you enter a shoe store, you see the fellow. You say, if I gave black, and up to now, I'm still ripping thank you. I will buy green. I will buy, it is natural. But when you give and you don't even know whether it reached the address, until the fellow poses with the shoe, he say, that is the shoe. <laughs> Number one, you don't know whether this fellow like what you bought. So how do you continue buying? How do you give someone that does not acknowledge what you have done? It is not possible. I tell you it is not possible. There are people that say, hey, if you don't want to give me, don't give me. I don't go about saying thank you. Then don't receive. Yes, arrogance. You give them something, you say, you didn't say thank you. You say, must I say thank you that because you gave me uh, 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 chewing gum? Very bad attitude. And that is the way we relate with God. You say, God, you want me to say thank you because of bicycle. When you gave the other fellow, may say this. I will thank you. I will dance for you the day you give me a helicopter. <laughs> if you cannot thank God for bicycle, if you cannot thank him for hand cart, you will not thank, even if he gives you the whole world, you will still complain because it's an attitude. In this month of divine additions, we must remember our here. Look at the three things that happen. Number one, gratitude at your here guarantees divine additions. Gratitude at your here. When you go back to your here and you say thank you, you will be given additions. Luke chapter 17 from verse 12 to, to 19 tells us of the story of the 10 lepers. Only one came back. To dear, to hear. Only one. Return to hear. And the Lord said, where are the rest? Because they did not come the rest. The Lord did an additional something. You are made whole. You are made whole. That was a divine addition to the healing. The rest of the nine, we don't know their stories up to today. So when you return to your here, you have the attitude of returning back to your here. There is one thing that is certain. The Lord will give you additional. Number two, returning to your here with gratitude brings wholeness. Like I have explained. What does it mean to have wholeness? You don't just get addition, but there will not be a reoccurrence of that prayer request. There are people that give testimonies and after a while, those testimonies go sour. They go back to the same prayer request. Oh, I don't know what happened. The devil stole my testimony. But when you remember how to give thanks in your here, you went for that meeting and the Lord answered you, go back in that here and thank God and do something. Give an offering. Let God see your heart that you appreciate what he has done. One of the things that you will discover is that God will put a seal over that testimony. And the devil cannot reverse it. So for the leper, what we see is that there was no scar for him. The Lord said you are made old. That means nobody in your family will ever be a leper. No spot, no scar, nothing again. In the society, if you are a leper, even if you were miraculously healed, they will still uh, isolate you, which is why normally the Bible says go and show yourself to the high priest. So that the high priest can make an announcement that you're healed. For this one, Jesus said, nobody will ever see you and remember you were a leper. When you come back to your here, God seals the testimony. And finally, whenever you give to the Lord, materially, spiritually, financially, and otherwise, you lend to the Lord. And every loan comes back with interest. 
in this time of divine additions, whatever you give to the Lord is a loan. And you are not giving God a loan because he's in need or he's stranded. You are giving him a loan for one reason. For your additions to come with it, for your, for your loan to come back to you with interest. Anna said, for this baby, we have lent him to the Lord. I've given the Lord this boy. And what does the Bible say? He, she got additionals. Things she did not think about. And so in this month, please, as you are asking God, divine additions, divine additions, whatever you give to the Lord is a loan. When you put your offerings here, it's a loan. You may not know, it's a loan. And God is not taking a loan because he needs the money. But whatever you give to the Lord comes back to you in a greater measure. It's a loan. And that's why I feel bad for those of us who think that the church is a place for merchandise. So, I will not give them offering. Because for you, you are giving the pastors. For you, you are giving for who, to who and who. So when you are coming, say, uh, offering, offering, no, 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 I'm giving. You are, you are robbing yourself. You know why? From Genesis to Revelation, the language of offering, offering has been there and we never cease. Whenever you give to the Lord, you are not giving to the Lord because he's stranded financially. You are lending him in order for him to return it with interest for you. So when you give, if you need a bigger interest, you know what to do. Based on your income, based on your power. And we have the right attitude. When you go for meetings and you are giving, don't ever think I'm giving to the church. Or I'm giving to people. And that's why some of us, when you have a little problem, you say, with all the offerings I gave them, who did you give? As you are giving, we are also giving. You say, with all the offerings I gave them, who are the them? It's the offering you gave the Lord. And if you know his address, you go and ask it back. You gave to the Lord and he gave you back. As we are giving him offering, I want to ask one or two people this morning to lend him their lives. You can also lend him your lives. You can tell God, I want to come to this altar today and borrow you my life. Because when you give God your life, it will come back to you in double measure. John chapter 12, from 23 to 25. John chapter 12, 23 to 25 says, And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come, that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if he die, he bringeth forth much fruit. 25 says, He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hated his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. He that loveth his life shall lose it. How do you love your life? I don't want to serve God. I don't want to be born again. I love men. I love women. I love sin. I want to do this. When I finish, I will get saved. He said, when you do that, you will lose your life. Those of us that say, it's no longer I that live it, but Christ that lives in me. Those of us that say, for me to live is Christ, and for me to die is gain. We have come to the point where we have lent our lives to the Lord, and the Lord is managing us. When you lend your life to him, he becomes your manager. Who is your manager this morning? Are you still managing your life? Are you still managing your career? Are you still managing your, 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 your even eternal life, controlling it and saying, I know. Some people will make a joke and they will say that day when Jesus comes, he will be so angry with me because I've done a lot of things that he will throw me like this without opening eyes and I will land in heaven. You will land in hell. You can lend your life to the Lord and the rest will be history. Shall we bow down our heads to pray this morning? This is our here. This is our here. Think of what God has done for you. Think of the vows you made to the Lord. Think of your own life. 
If you die right now, as I'm talking, have you lent your life to the Lord? Do you know why we are so sure of eternal life? Hey, why we are sure we will not die, but appear before God? is because we have lent our lives to the Lord. We've given our lives like Samuel was given. And today we are still talking about Samuel, why he's even dead. When you give your life to Jesus, you can be guaranteed of eternal life. This morning we are about to worship him. But your worship will not be acceptable until you lay your life at this altar. And if you're here, you want to lend the Lord your life. You want to say, Jesus, I want you to take over and be my manager. Forgive my sins. Please come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. Take over. Even those of us in the overflow at the new auditorium, I can see you through the door. I can see you here through the door. And I'm sure you are watching us on the screen. I want to beckon on everyone. If you want Jesus to take over your life to manage, forgive you your sins, and be your Lord and your Savior. It is simple. I will help you to do what Hannah did. I want to present you as a Samuel before the Lord. And if you want it, just lift up your hand. Say, here I am, please. God bless you. I can see you, my sister. Raise your hand. Yes, I can see you, my sister. Please raise your hand and say, Jesus, take over. Yes, I see you. I see all of you raising your hands. You are telling Jesus, take over, take over. I am tired. And if you are under the overflow outside and you are lifting your hands, I will wait for you as you take a step. I want to present you to the temple the way that Hannah presented somewhere. What a privilege for you. I will present your life at this altar. And from today, as God took over the life of Samuel, God is taking over your life. Those of you that your hands are up, come here. Come here. Just stand up where you are. Stand up where you are. Yes, stand up where you are. And just take a step towards where I am. Towards this altar. I want you to lay your life at this altar and tell Jesus to take over. Tell Jesus to take over. One day, Jesus will call you by name. Can we welcome them with a song? Jesus will call my name. Oh, as days go by. As goes by, I hope I don't stay Ushers, help same. me check whether there is anybody in the overflow. I want to get so close to me. So me. that I wait for them. I surrender to Jesus. On that day. Jesus. Surrender to him this morning. Surrender, 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 surrender. Surrender just one day. Jesus, we call by name. Please let's lead him to Jesus. Congratulations. You've come out exactly the way Hannah took Samuel to the temple and offered him before the Lord. Say, take over. And from that day, Jesus took over Samuel. We don't hear the names of the children of Penina till today. Even the Bible does not tell us the name of one child of Penina because they did not belong to God. But today you've come because you need Jesus. 
hands have been uh, prayers have been made for you i want you to just just lift up your hands as i seal that prayer the way eli sealed it father thank you for salvation of souls thank you for grace to say yes to jesus thank you for making your words simple and clear thank you for helping your word to make sense to somebody God, these ones have taken a bold step to say from today, take over my life and manage.